well, Tony, you did this talk, you know, about six months ago when you were talking about, you know, this and being an influencer that. I felt like all I was doing was producing content to try to sell something. And that bothered me. There is an immense amount of pressure that is behind the word influencer. Sometimes you gotta just realize like, if you do what you desire to do and you do it wholeheartedly, the bag will find you. You don't have to chase it. If we look at the actual definition of what an influencer is and what a content creator is, these two are vastly different. Please do not call me an influencer. Hey love, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Tony. if this is your very first time. If you are coming back, you must like me. Y'all know I'm just playing, I joke around a lot. So long story short, we are gonna get into a get ready with me today. And y'all already know how I like to do my get ready with me's. I don't like to spend too, too much time focusing on the makeup. I like to kind of just stay true to the topic. If you are interested in anything I'm using, it will be in the description box. No pressure there, just leaving it there for anybody who might be interested. So let's go ahead and get into the conversation. Let me just go ahead and give you like a little bit of context as to why this video is titled the way that it is and kind of set you up for the things that we are going to be discussing on this video. Let me find my brow pencil. Okay, not my brow pencil, my brow brush. Anyway, I just want to make a disclaimer right here and right now, whatever I have previously said on my channel, on my Instagram, on my TikTok, anywhere that you have seen me active, I want you to disregard everything that you have seen prior to this moment. Not necessarily everything that you've seen, but if I've had any kind of talks about influencer stuff, that's what I want you guys to disregard because this mindset that I'm in now, this is truly what I am adopting. So I'm just, I'm just putting that out there because I know somebody is going to go back and be like, well, Tony, you did this talk, you know, about six months ago when you were talking about, you know, this and being an influencer that. Scratch everything from the record, okay? I don't know if I said it on this channel. I really think it was on my podcast channel that I said this, but how I prepare for my videos, so it's Sunday, right? When you guys are seeing this video, I would have already had this video prepared a week prior to. Really and truly, you guys, like right now in my life, I've really been trying to prioritize making sure that I am keeping the most high in all of what I'm doing. Like I'm in very much so in my spiritual journey and it's not a season. Like this is just the journey that I'm on to grow spiritually. So I'm trying to make sure that I have God in all of my videos, all of my topics, everything. So even though I might write down that, okay, I want to have a, a video top. I mean, I want to have a video for, like I said, this Sunday, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get what I need on my spirit about whatever it is that I'm supposed to talk about. There's no guarantee that I'm going to get it a week in advance. So that's kind of what happened this week. I was in a, you know, just, I was, I was prepared. I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm like, okay. Like I'm waiting for this to be put on my spirit. What I'm supposed to talk about when I say nothing was coming. And that actually happened on the last po uh, podcast episode too. I was just waiting for this topic to kind of like just hit me and it just wasn't coming to me. So same thing here, wasn't coming to me all week last Sunday up until this past Thursday, because I am actually filming this right now on Thursday. Yesterday, I was working middle of the day and all of a sudden the top, I mean, the, the word influencer came into my spirit. Now here's the thing. It didn't come into my spirit the way you probably think it did. So you're probably thinking, Oh, do an influencer based topic, like uh, how to become an influencer, how to become an influencer in 2024, um, influencer brand deals, influencer. Like that's probably what y'all are thinking. It was on the way, 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 way other opposite end of that because I've already been kind of having some feelings recently. Okay, hold on y'all, cause y'all know I can't talk and draw at the same time. But I had already been having some feelings kind of coming into 
my thought process here recently, and I won't go too, too in depth because that I, I'll explain as the course of this video goes on, but I had already been having some feelings. And so right when that word just kind of fell on my spirit, I was like, okay, like I know what I'm supposed to do with that topic. Normally what I do is I'll go to YouTube and I'll type in a keyword that I plan on using within the video. Like I might not have the video completed, but most of the time when I get a word onto my spirit like that, or if I know that I'm using a certain phrase like GRWM for get ready with me, um, makeup WOC, which is obviously makeup women of color. Like I'll know exactly what keywords and I'll kind of build out some talking points and then I'll know what I'm going to title my video. So I already knew that I was going to title this video the way that it is now. Don't call me an influencer. And I wanted to make sure that nobody else had that type of title, right? So I go to Instagram, not Instagram, I go to YouTube and I type in influencer in the search engine um, on YouTube. And when I say you guys, this is nothing but, nothing but confirmation from God that this is exactly what I was supposed to be talking about. The very first video that popped up was by a guy named Hines. And I actually happened to be subscribed to his channel. I've talked about his channel on my channel previously because when I say this guy, very secure in what he does, very secure in what type of content he produces, just really gives you different perspectives like he really gives you different perspectives on just things that are kind of going on trusting in your instinct kind of like y'all will know what i'm talking about just go check him out but like i said his video popped up and it just so happened that his video popped up four hours prior to me typing in the word influencer and searching for it i didn't even see the notification about the subscription feed or anything like that I just happened to type it in and saw that that was the video that popped up. So, oops, let me prime my face because I am about to get too far into the process. See y'all, this is why I don't like talking and like, I'll, I don't like having a topic and then also trying to tell what kind of makeup I'm using because I get sidetracked and once I start talking, okay, clearly that's not opening. Once, <laughs> once I start talking, sometimes I just get distracted and then I'll forget that I'm even doing my makeup in the process. But anyway, the title of his video, very, very interesting. It said influencers will only last a few more years. I immediately clicked on the video because I'm like, he already similarly was talking about what was on my spirit. But like I said, you guys, this was just confirmation on the thoughts that the Holy Spirit was sharing with me i open up the video and basically the overall context of the video was that influencers like there are so there the, the competition is just so much different from what it was before like everybody is on this mission to become the next big influencer so he's talking about like that but he was also talking about how ai is starting to take over a lot of things and some of these people are creating ai women to you know sell products take pictures so basically what an ai created woman could do with selling clothes or modeling clothes and things like that they can do that at a rate that is so much higher than an actual human person. So it was, like I said, it was a really good video. He had a lot of different perspectives on things, but he kind of, again, just gave me confirmation on something that was put into my heart. I wanted to give you guys just a little bit of the backstory so that you can understand why I am about to say what I'm about to say and why I have the feelings that I have in regards to this topic so please do not call me an influencer i i don't want to be called an influencer and so here's the thing this is what was kind of placed on my spirit a little while ago before i get into kind of like my notes that i had written down but i watched a podcast 
episode of Megan Ashley, um, her In Totality podcast episode. I want to say, no, I think she was talking to Crystal Hazlett on her podcast, which is, um, oh my gosh, what is the name of her podcast? Keep it positive, sweetie. That's what it was. I think they were on her podcast platform when they were talking about this particular subject, but she said, I think the question to Megan was how, how are you managing? Like, you know, being in front of a lot of eyes and this and that. And Megan said something that stuck out to me. She said, people, you know, they desire to be an influencer and everything, but they don't realize how much pressure is behind it. And when she said that, I knew exactly what she was talking about. Like, I'm not at the magnitude that she is. I don't have the amount of followers that she has. I don't have the community that she has. But I felt that even now with just having the community that I have, which is a little bit smaller in numbers, and I'm grateful, so grateful for each and every person that even comes here to watch me run my mouth and watch me do my makeup. Like, y'all get what I'm saying? It's, it, I'm grateful for each and every one of you guys. But... I feel like already that there is an immense amount of pressure that is behind the word influencer that we just don't sit and think enough about. We don't we don't think about the pressures that come with that and all that it entails. Everybody just looks at, oh, I'm an influencer and everybody knows my name, but do we really... <laughs> You know what? Let me just get back on track because I don't want to run off on a tangent and I kind of will explain a lot of this here in a second. <laughs> so I did look up the definition of influencer and I looked up the definition of a content creator. Now, most people probably think, oh, well, content creators and influencers, they're all in the same. No, they definitely are not. So the definition of an influencer is a person with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service by promoting or recommending the items on social media. And then on the opposite side of that, we have the content creator. And if we're looking at a textbook version or textbook definition of what a content creator is, or what, the, what a content creator does is the act of producing and sharing information or media content for specific audiences, particularly in digital context. So, like I said, if we look at the actual definition of what an influencer is and what a content creator is, these two are vastly different. They are not the same. So while everybody says around time out, okay, a content creator is an influencer, they're not. They're definitely not. They are similar in some ways, but vastly different. And I want to kind of elaborate on that for just a second. So in my opinion, again, this is my personal opinion. This is my perspective. You are entitled to have your own. I really do like this primer. I'm sorry, I just got sidetracked. I just was like rubbing in my foundation and like it just rubbed on so smooth. I think it was that primer that I used. It was a, what is it called? Cause that was amazing. It's the Lancome Priming Serum. It's a 24 hour hydrating solid smoothing primer. Baby, I'm gonna have to use that a little more. I've had it put up in my closet. Anyway, I digress. Like I said, personal opinion to each and own. But after I kind of sat with this on my spirit for a while, an influencer to me keeps you locked in and focused solely on the money. And I have a couple of examples of this. So we have all seen how TikTok has changed. TikTok shop has taken over. Now, here's the thing. TikTok shop is an excellent platform for businesses. I get it. They can get on there. They can sell, they can sell their product. 
and they're using content creators to do it. I began to feel like I was losing myself trying to produce content for the TikTok shop collaborations. I felt like all I was doing was producing content to try to sell something. And that bothered me. Like there was a point in time, and this is actually, you guys, one of the one of the reasons why I stopped doing the whole wig influencing thing, but I'll get into that in just a second. But it just felt like every video that I was doing was centered around trying to sell something. And honestly, I just was getting irritated by it. Like, do you guys ever go in the mall, right? And as soon as you walk in, you're like, oh, I'm just browsing. Somebody greets you, you say, oh, I'm just browsing. And then they come back like two seconds later, like, oh, can I help you find something? Do you wanna try that on, blah, blah, blah. And you like, look, I just told you I was browsing. Like, I'm good, like, just, just give me a moment. I felt like the content that I was producing was beginning to make people feel like that. Like every single video had a TikTok shop link. And although, yeah, I could have found a creative way to do it or a creative way to promote it, at the end of the day, I was still just trying to sell something. It was backed by money. Like the whole entire thought process was just focused on money. And honestly, like I said, y'all, this just bothered me. It really did. And just kind of going into the whole wig influencing thing, I had already felt like I was over the whole wig influencing thing anyway. Like it was cool when I first did it, but honestly, I don't even wear wigs like that. Like a lot of the wigs that you guys see on my platform right now, the only time you saw me wear them was when I was doing the YouTube video for it or making the content for it. I have never been a wig person like that. And although I wanted to try, like I had a goal, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I had a goal last year, last January, when I first started kind of getting, um, I first started getting brands, like reaching out to me, asking if I wanted to promote wigs and all that. So I made a promise to myself last January I said, by the end of this year, I am going to learn how to lay a lace front wig. Like for whatever reason, that was the goal I had. I'm going to learn how to lay a lace front. And by the end of the year, I did. I really did. I actually accomplished that goal that I had. And I felt great about it. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It felt good to know that I actually stuck to something and finished it like I, I saw it through all the way you know i um i stopped doing wig influencing because i just didn't really care for wigs but at the same time you guys i i consciously like it was messing with my conscience because i can't consciously try to promote something that i know i would not spend my money on and some of those wigs i would not spend my money on even if they were two dollars i'm just gonna call it like it is and i hate to i hate that i did that for so long like continued to make content on things that i knew that i didn't agree with knew that i didn't like um and i think that's why ultimately i put way too much on my forehead it's okay um, I think that's why ultimately I just kind of decided like, you know what, I'm not gonna do this. I would rather go back to my sew-ins, back to my quick weaves because I'll wear those. Like this hair that I have in now, um, I talked about it on my Instagram. I would pay money for this hair out of my pocket. So I don't mind wearing it, talk about it, uh, talk about it, Lord. <laughs> I, w I don't mind talking about it because I know that it is a brand that I would actually wear. But I was just getting over it. I was just getting over it. I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't feel good in my spirit. Like, I just didn't feel good. And I had to listen to my spirit. Like, I can't continue to, you know, keep doing something that doesn't sit well with me at the end of the night. It really was just, it was messing with me. And you know what? It might not have even been messing with me. It might've just been the Holy Spirit. Like, look, baby girl, I have something else for you. You just have to trust me enough to walk away from this so I can show you what I want you to do. Like, I, I honestly feel like that's what was happening with this situation. But 
I'm not saying that I would never promote wigs again, but it would have to be a wig that I actually like. When we look at the situation or personally looking at calling myself an influencer, it it's like it just has me focused solely on the money versus whereas a content creator, if I look at myself as a content creator, it allows me to keep my focus on my creativity. It allows me to trust my own instinct. Like one thing that Heinz pointed out in his video, and I'll try to plug it in if I can get to it, but he mentioned like, you know, a lot of people feel like they gotta kind of ride that wave of doing trending sounds, trending videos, this and that. Like you're always trying to do something to keep up with everybody else, keep up with the masses, keep up with the whole entire world. And so to me, you lose your creativity that way. You lose that, that certain it factor that you have because you want that influencer status so bad, you wanna blow up so bad that you're compromising your very creative juices like the the creativity that you ha that you have naturally you're compromising it just trying to keep up and i felt like that i felt that entirely like i'll kind of talk about burnout here in a second but that's where a lot of that stems from uh burnout and all of that is because you are compromising your creativity trying to keep up with everything else that's flowing and going in the world and that is not the approach that you want to have I mentioned when I was giving you the definition of a content creator that you're more value-based, like you're producing content with the drive to share something, share something valuable, share something entertaining. Maybe you wanna make people laugh. Maybe you wanna show people how to create a video like you just created one. It's value-based, but not only is it value-based, it allows you to actually build that community and actually build rapport within your community. Like I kind of been, I've been paying attention to what's going on on Instagram. A lot of people are making these faceless Instagram accounts, right? And yeah, they're getting a whole lot of follows. They're getting a whole lot of likes, but nobody sees you. Nobody can make that personal connection with you. And at the end of the day, you guys, this is what it's all about. Like, you guys are not gonna like me and want to continue to watch me if I were to sit here and be a faceless account and just give you little info cards every day or give you little inspirating, uh, inspirating, golly, can I talk today? Inspiring quotes. That's not gonna really make you want to get to know me that's not gonna encourage you to want to see what i'm about see what other talking points i have it's just not going to make you want to get to know me whereas if i'm giving you my true feelings i'm giving you my true innermost thoughts i'm talking about it freely i'm showing you makeup or whatever it is that i'm showing you i am giving you something that is value Based. I'm giving you something that we can converse about later on. If we're using the influencer as the talking point for that, it's it just keeps everything focused on money. So rather than actually focusing on building the, or excuse me, providing the value to your community, now it's all about, okay, I want to focus on selling you this next product. I want to focus on selling you this skincare line that I don't even use because it breaks me out, but I'm going to sell it to you because I need to get my check on the back end. We're getting that bag. Well, sometimes you got to just realize like, if you do what you desire to do and you do it wholeheartedly, the bag will find you. You don't have to chase it. I can speak to you guys from personal experience. I have lost my way so many times in this process and that's because i stopped trusting my own instinct and i was desiring to be that next big influencer so what did i do i started creating all of the trending videos and the trending sounds i started doing a lot of the videos that are already out there even in being a content creator yes there are going to be times where you sell something i'm not saying that you'll never sell anything because 
at some point you are bound to have a collaboration with the brand and you're going to have to sell something. It's part of the process. What I don't want to do anymore is find myself constantly working with brands that I would not spend my money on and that I do not actually enjoy just so I can keep up and make it look as if I'm doing just as much as everybody else. I don't need to do that. This, all of this is really and truly tied to just my spiritual journey, spiritual awakening, because now I can look at myself and be like, okay, you have everything that you need. Why did you doubt yourself in the first place? And a lot of that doubt comes from not, you know, not doing what you love and enjoy. You're doing it the way that everybody else is doing it. And I really had to try to get away from that. And I'm just glad that, again that god has shown me certain videos play certain things in my path that actually remind me of who i am remind me of why i even started this process in the first place and remind me that i'm gonna be fine like i just have to continue to trust in what he gives me in my spirit do that and that that's literally all i need at this point i was talking to you guys uh, I briefly mentioned a little while ago something about burnout. If you haven't picked up on it <laughs> yet, this whole, this whole video is pretty much talking about burnout. Like the underlying theme kind of in this video, I guess, would be burnout. Because a lot of us, again, we create this content, right? But then we lose the desire of actually creating the content and then we desire this influencer status. So that influencer status will keep you hustling and bustling. Like you'll never be able to stop. You'll kind of be trapped into this box of, okay, I can only produce this kind of content because this is what everybody loves. This is what everybody wants to see from me. And it keeps you locked into that rather than on the creative process right this is where a lot of that burnout comes from like i'll kind of give you guys my personal um experience with this but like i said right when i hadn't given up the wigs yet but i'd say around i'd say around like september october last year i was really 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 starting to feel this burnout and at first i couldn't tell where it was coming from like I would look at my camera sitting here over in the corner and I would just roll my eyes and walk out the door. Like I didn't even want to pick up my camera. And that to me was like a huge red flag because I'm like, why am I not wanting to pick up my camera? Why am I not wanting to film? Why am I not wanting to stay on track with my YouTube videos? Like, and like I said, you guys, I don't have a hundred K followers yet or subscribers. I haven't gotten my YouTube plaque yet. Notice I said yet because I'll still eventually, you know, want to work towards that. But even though I don't have like the certain amount of followers, subscribers, all that, I still try to keep a schedule. I still like to post on every Sunday, most of the time, Sunday and Wednesday, just because that's something that I like to do. I want to make sure that I show up, that I'm my best, that I keep a schedule. And that my, you know, that my people who watch me, that they can see that. September, October, I started noticing I didn't want to, I didn't want to be bothered. I had wigs starting to literally pile up. Like I had like seven or eight wigs to do. And I just looked at them every single day. I was pushing those wigs off till the very, very last point. I was having to send emails like, Oh, you know, I had, I experienced something. I'm going to have to get back with you on these. I'm going to need, you know, a little more time. And that started to bother me. That was like red flag number two, because usually when I had partnerships, I would get them done. Like as soon as they got here, I'm filming the content so I can turn it back in because I want to be done. I started to notice that when those packages were coming through, baby, those boxes were sitting. I was doing nothing with those boxes and this like i said that was the red flag that really started having me like okay what is going on with you like you're doing what you love you've worked with some pretty cool brands like what is it like what what are you missing or what do you feel like you need and over time 
I began to realize like what I need is to get back to doing content that I enjoy, get back to being free to talk about whatever I want to and not feeling like I'm trapped. Like, and I feel like this is kind of personally, this is kind of a downfall of doing the whole wig content because they want you to only solely talk about wigs. Well, I'm not going to solely talk about wigs. That's not the only kind of content that I create. I literally had a brand reach out to me one day and say, well, we suggest that you just, you know, from here on out that you make content specifically for wigs and don't do any kind of other content. And I was like, are you crazy? Like, no, that's that's not who I am. That's not the content creator that I am. I'm not just a wig content maker. I create all kinds of things. I like beauty. I like hair. I like lifestyle. <coughs> Excuse me. I like a lot of different things. I like a lot of different things and I wasn't going to allow myself to be boxed in. I wasn't going to allow another company to box me in. And so well, when I got that... <clears throat> when i got that email it started changing my perspective on a lot because i'm not going to allow anybody to take away my creativity i'm not going to allow anybody to tell me how to create my content and if that's what being an influencer is i don't want it i don't you can you can refer to me as a content creator and i am perfectly fine with that because at least i know that I still have full creative control over what I'm doing. I'm not crying, y'all. Like, I coughed. <laughs> and that cough got me. Like, I had my eyes water. But like I said, I would much rather just be called a content creator. I don't I don't want the title of influencer. Like I said, it just, it comes with too much pressure. It comes with too much stress. It comes with, you know, not being able to really pour into the things that you want you got to constantly be focused on the money i would much rather sit here still work my full-time job and get to create the content that i actually enjoy and the content that i can be proud of at the end of the day if i can't be proud of the content that i am producing how can i how can i say that i'm giving glory to God in my content if I can't be proud of what I'm making if I can't at the end of the day be like okay I did this I gave it my whole heart I you know allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me at this and like how can I possibly go to bed with myself every single day knowing that I didn't do what I was supposed to knowing that I sold myself out just to make a few dollars so I could keep up with everybody else. Like, I don't know. You guys, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let me go ahead and finish powdering my face real quick because honestly, I'm done. I just need to put on some um, mascara real quick. All right, as you guys can see, we are all done. We are keeping it super, super simple. Honestly, y'all, I keep it simple pretty much every day at this point in my life. <laughs> I keep it simple all the time, but um honestly you guys it overall i want you guys to take away this do not allow anything to strip you of your creativity even the title of being an influencer don't let it strip you of your creativity like when i say i literally from here on out i don't want to be referenced as an influencer i just want to reference myself as a content creator and that's it because that's literally what I'm here doing. Now I can freely do what I want. I can freely create the content that I want and take off this additional pressure that the word influencer holds. Like, and to be honest, you guys, like I said, influencer, the word itself, the title, the whole thing that comes with it, it's just a lot of pressure. And I don't wanna be responsible for anybody. I don't wanna be responsible for anybody's decisions. I don't want to be responsible for, you know, um, somebody buying something just because I said buy it. Like, no, I want you guys to buy something because you want to buy it, because you truly want to try it out. Don't just take my word for it. Don't just use my affiliate links just because. Like, I want you guys to make decisions, make sound decisions based off you. Trust me, I've been on the receiving end 
where I've watched certain influencers and something just kind of got embedded in my subconscious because they used it. So then I find myself at the store trying to buy the same $50, $60 product. And I know good and doggone well, $50, $60 ain't working for my pockets right now. Like I have been in that position where I've been influenced. So that's why I know that I don't want that kind of responsibility. I don't, I don't want to be held accountable for anybody's decisions on why they buy or why they do or where they travel to, what they eat. I don't want that responsibility. So just think of me as your neighborhood, your, your friendly neighborhood, Tony. I'm not Spidey. I'm not your friendly neighborhood spider. I'm your friendly neighborhood, Tony. And we're web buddies. Like <laughs> That's all I want you guys to get out of it. You know, like be here to inspire, not be here to necessarily influence. Inspire through your content and people will genuinely see who you are. People will genuinely begin to like you because they can see that you are being 100% authentic with them. That's all people want. And once they get to know you, it won't matter what you do. It won't matter what kind of content you produce. They'll, they'll be there for you and for you only. So that is what I have for you guys today. Again, take what you want, leave what you don't need. If you are kind of like me and you're just like, I'm in a season where just call me a content creator, don't call me an influencer. Look, we're here. We're here together. If you still want to call yourself an influencer, there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong. You guys, at the end of the day, this is all personal perspective. It's what It comes down to what you like. It comes down to what you resonate with. But for me, moving forward, I'm just me. You know, I'm just me. I'm just the girl. I'm just a girl who likes to make videos. <laughs> y'all, let me stop playing with y'all. But that is actually all I have for you guys today. I really hope you um, I really hope you guys took something away from this conversation. Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me, do you feel like there is a vast difference between an influencer and being a content creator? Share your thoughts. Are we kind of over the whole influencer era? Are we still into them? Are we just liking the content creators? I want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions. So like I said, drop a comment down below. But we have come to an end on this video. I really appreciate you guys being here. And I hope you come back next time for whenever I have my next video. I'm sure it'll be next Sunday if I can stay on track. <laughs> but I will catch you guys on the next video. So until next time, love.